Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show that says no to the impossible and instead opts for the outrageously inconvenient. Death Stranding is a post-apocalyptic postal service simulator tasking you with using tons of fancy sci-fi gadgetry to deliver underpants with the ultimate goal of reuniting the United Cities of America. But I'm in the mood to take things slow, breathe in the fresh air, and explore the apocalypse with only the socks on my feet. This is Death Stranding's Minimalist Challenge. Time for the grand rules. Except when explicitly required for progression, all structures, equipable items, and inventory items are banned. There are just too many to specifically list here, but the general idea is if we have to access the inventory to use it, we are not allowed to use it. The big ones are no vehicles, no weapons, no PCC structures, no urination, and no shoes. Note that these items are only banned when explicitly used as equipment. Carrying them as cargo and accidentally misplacing them on someone's face is allowed. The run is complete when we reach the conclusion of the game's story. Most of the game's opening is identical to a vanilla playthrough. We're not even allowed to take off our shoes yet, and there aren't many equipable items to begin with. There is one major distinction, however. Normally, when you make your first delivery to a location, they'll be added to the chiral network, giving the player the ability to craft their own structures there as well as making structures built by other players visible. Since Using other players' structures is just as banned as using our own, we're playing the entire game in offline mode. Even if America is finally reunited by the end, it's gonna stay a barren wasteland. Once you get the ability to fabricate shoes, you also gain the ability to take them off your feet, which is where the run really starts. Going hiking in your socks is strongly ill-advised. Sam's maximum speed will be ridiculously slow, he'll keep losing his footing and tripping all over the place, and after a couple minutes, his feet will literally begin to bleed, draining one milliliter of blood for every step he takes. The bleeding may sound bad, but don't worry. Sam's feet are smart enough to stop bleeding when the health bar is at or below 300. Bleeding feet are less of a death timer and more of a max HP downgrade. Just assume you'll be at 300 for most of the game. The only real downside is your health doubles as a consciousness gauge, making it more likely for you to get knocked out. And of course, more likely for you to die, if that's something you care about. The real kicker is Sam's low walk speed. Death Stranding's entire premise has you walking back and forth across the entire continental United States, and while the map is significantly smaller than in the real world, you're usually expected to be using vehicles or, you know, running most of the time. Take full advantage of every speed increase and shortcut you can find. If heading down river, you can intentionally fall in and be whisked away on the rapids. When going down particularly steep slopes, you can intentionally trip to slide down snow or roll down hills Sonic style. I also found a decent technique for flat straightaways. You can get a decent speed boost by mashing jump over and over. When Sam jumps multiple times in a row, he'll start tripping when he lands, giving a small speed boost without entirely falling over. If you do this on rough terrain, there's a chance of an even longer and better tripping animation, so it's recommended to jump for the most awkward landing possible. Though, full disclosure, I'm not entirely sure this is faster than just walking, but I did it the entire playthrough and listened to the low stamina beeping noise the entire playthrough, so it has to be true. What I do know for certain is absolutely faster, I unfortunately didn't find out until right at the end of the game. Just keep alternating between starting a run and sliding into a crouch. The sliding animation is faster than Sam's shoeless run speed, letting you chain slides for a ridiculous speed boost. Plus, if you're passing by mules, I actually recommend getting spotted. When enemies go into alert mode, Sam gets an adrenaline rush maxing out his stamina, and it has the secret special attribute of allowing Sam to ignore the pain of his bleeding feet and run at full speed. The same applies to BTs. The moment they notice you, your walk speed gets an increase and you get full stamina with which to hold your breath, effectively making you invisible. I was initially worried we would have to rest constantly to restore stamina, but turns out when you're not wearing shoes, stamina is more of an illusion than an actual game mechanic. Even if your stamina reaches zero, Sam is still fully capable of movement no different from before. The only major difference is walking up steep slopes. You can still do it, you just have to do it a tiny bit slower. Resting does, however, restore Sam's blood, which is useful during the Vogue Retrieval mission later in the game. Staying down there drains your consciousness, and once it runs out, you get an outright game over screen. With full health, you have just barely enough time to run in, grab one or two packages, and run out to refill your health once again. I also recommend healing just before actually fighting mules and terrorists for retrieval missions. As for the combat strategy, I recommend, as always, running away like a little sissy baby. While it is feasible to punch out an entire mule camp on your own, it becomes way harder by the time they start carrying guns. Just run for the cargo you need, grab it, and immediately get your butt out of there. Even if you do get knocked out or die, 
there's basically no penalty for death by bullets, letting you make another attempt instantly. The unfortunate reality of the run is that, while almost the entire game can be beaten without ever manually equipping any items, there are three distinct exceptions. The Creeper BT, the Amelie Higgs Fusion, and the Giant Whale. Punching, whacking with cargo, and throwing cargo are all completely ineffective. No matter how many times you do it, the boss's health bar will refuse to even appear on screen. I also tried equipping urine, but alas, Sam is too shy to urinate while Eldritch Abominations are watching. The only way to deal damage is by equipping blood-based weaponry, making this minimalist challenge have a bit more rocket launchers than you might expect. Nevertheless, there is at least some extra strategy involved, beating every boss without healing via blood bag. While getting eaten results in a game over, dying by blood loss just revives us with a full health bar, functionally acting as an ammo refill. And as for the lion boss, it's actually completely optional. Unlike the other battles, there's no barrier around the arena. You're free to run away like a little sissy baby. And of course, in the Higgs battle, you're already expected to win without guns, so simply punching him a lot is encouraged by the devs. The far more interesting boss fights and the absolute highlights of the run are the battles with Clifford Unger. Unlike the giant monsters, he actually does take damage from punching, meaning we can minimalize to our heart's content. In the first battle, you're trapped in a maze of trenches featuring several skeleton warriors guarding Cliff himself. There are four phases to the fight. In each phase, Cliff and every skeleton have a small portion of the maze they patrol. Walking to one location, staring into space, walking to a second location, staring into space, and repeating to infinity. Trying to kill the skeletons is an extremely bad idea. The moment a skeleton is punched, you'll immediately go into alert mode, causing everybody else to run straight towards you. Thankfully, this does not apply to Cliff himself. He becomes completely blind and incapable of triggering an alert while being punched. Punch him relentlessly and he'll eventually be knocked unconscious. Stand behind him and punch him as soon as he's fully standing. If done properly, you'll lock Cliff into an infinite combo. Eventually, he'll take enough damage to advance phases, teleporting to another section of the maze, shuffling the skeletons with him. During phase two, he's blocked on one side by a skeleton that will inevitably see you if the combo goes on too long. If you're worried the skeleton's about to see you, hit Cliff just enough to knock him unconscious, then run back towards cover. If you get away fast enough, Cliff will wake up with a monstrous head Headache and no clue whatsoever how he got it, returning to business as usual. If you do get spotted, make a run for it and crouch in a safe spot once you think you've lost the skeletons. After alert mode passes, Cliff and the skeletons will walk straight back to their starting positions, plus Sam will regenerate health up to 301, letting you try again as many times as you need, as long as you don't take too many bullets at once. Be very careful where you walk and make note of every skeleton's patrol route, and eventually you'll be able to wear down Cliff's health and finish the fight after about an hour. The second Cliff fight changes the formula. The battlefield is much more open, and Cliff tends to group up with the skeletons. Simply sneaking up on him is much more difficult and generally not sustainable. For a good while, I tried a hit-and-run strategy throwing guns at the back of his head, which, while technically legal, was way too dangerous and a massive time sink thanks to an inexplicable glitch in the AI. After every alert mode, Cliff and the skeletons would head to these exact positions and just stand there staring into space for minutes at a time, forcing us to do the same. Eventually, somebody in the Strem chat suggested a much better strategy. Rather than throwing the cargo at Cliff, we head to a safe spot of the map and throw it at absolutely nothing. Cliff's ears are magical and will notice the sound no matter how far away he is, coming to inspect it along with all the skeletons. If you're lucky enough for Cliff to be the last one to leave, catch up with him and start your combo. And don't worry about the skeletons, they are completely deaf to everything other than thrown packages. Using this strategy, both the second Cliff fight and the third later in the game are way easier than the first. Get Cliff in the right spot and you can infinite combo him while the rest of the skeletons lays about wondering why their commanding officer is taking so long. Real talk, while I was super excited for this run, even before I'd finished my casual playthrough of Death Stranding, turns out there just aren't as many interesting complications as I hoped. 90% of the game turns into a battle with your own extremely slow walk speed. The BT boss fights leave no wiggle room to fight them in any way other than cramming blood down their throats, and honestly, one of the coolest parts of Death Stranding is the drip feed of extra gadgets and mechanics to experiment with over the course of the campaign. I absolutely recommend trying your hand at fighting all three cliff fights minimalist, which luckily the game lets you replay on a completed file as much as you want. They were incredibly satisfying to finally pull off. I do not, however, recommend doing the minimalist challenge in its entirety. You're better off playing Death Stranding as it was meant to be played, however you darned well please.
Anyway, it's been a relaxing couple months. Too relaxing, I can't function without pain. It's time to get back to work. Starting today at noon Eastern time, I'll be once again attempting to beat Rockman 3 Damageless on my Twitch channel. Yes, again, I tried it about a year ago and died painfully horribly. Let's hope this time I win painfully horribly. See you in the stream chat. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Andrew Seibert, the friendly resident of Subcon Forest, Mrs. Ekman, Les Lamb, R.B. Drox, All in Zero, Alexander Botkin, Chris Nate, Anyu, Chosen Muffin, Ikrira, BCR Main Sound, The Bass Singer, Vincent Hall, Vincent YT, Yellow Alert, Alex Nelson, and On42, Lively Leader, Pencil Twist, The Quacky Gamer, Baxoy, Jace Nilgis, Luminescent Dragon, Z Master, Ashley, Prey Tours, Avi G, Faith, Lane Robert Leishman, Rory Kelly. Whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Gabal, Goopy Fella, Crustacean Creep, Queen Sapphire, Quinn Mudry, Plum Sweater, Cam the Can One, JP, Nathaniel Kalita, 8-Bit Mistrevis, Celestial Cookie, Xander Kozak, Rion, Ace of Hearts, who Alex Likes to Eat, Blake Long, Doom Taker, Drill Commander, Epic Evan 921, Jorb, Caleb Cater, Maverick Swordsman, Misfunctional, Procrastinating Destiny, Rundum Goy, Shadow Murloc, Super Davio, Trent Long, Ye Old Foreign, Aaron Bailey, Alistair Echoes, Brandon Jessup, Complacent Moon, Epic Antos, Game Champ says trans rights are human rights, G Golly Wiz, my name is Spider-Man and I sure do love lasagna, Gussios, John Frary, Multicore, Mustache Duct Tape, Periodic Science, Phantom Thief B, Fooey, Royale Chaos, The Green Scorpion, Zoe, Boom Boxy, Christopher Gunderson, Dino Nerd Ghost. I couldn't think of anything witty, so this is my name. Curbs D50, Kitsugaru, Lero Rario, Santiago Zavars Brett, SNS Main, Star Captain Eli Shaba of Clan Ghost Bear, Vector 30Z, and when will you release the other 2,999 game champs from your basement? Let me know how much this video sucks and how to improve in the comments below. Keep on keeping on, and get out of my house.